Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well. I wanted to sit down and get this video filmed because I missed an upload last week. Um, life just got a bit crazy. Noah was poorly last week and the week before um, with tonsillitis and laryngitis so I didn't get a chance to sit down and film so I wanted to put out this video today. Um, hence the no makeup and the rushedness of this video but I wanted to just sit down and talk through my symptoms kind of in the second trimester. So the second trimester of pregnancy is from around about week 13, 14 up until week 27. I'm currently nearly 31 weeks pregnant so I wanted to get this kind of put on film whilst it was all still relatively fresh. Um, and just run through week by week kind of the symptoms that I had. The second trimester was the best of all of the trimesters so far. Um, obviously that tends to be the case with most pregnancies. Um, I wanted to talk through a week by week kind of breakdown of everything that I um, experienced in the second trimester. Um, there are some weeks that were the same as others so I've kind of just done a brief list of um, things on my phone of different things that happened from um, the beginning of the second trimester to the end. So enough waffling on, I'll just kind of run through the list that's on my phone. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you'll know that I suffered with hyperemesis gravidarum in the first trimester. Um, that carried on till around about week 17. So the first few weeks of my second trimester were still pretty miserable. Um, I was still very dehydrated, um, couldn't keep food or water down, um, and I was put on medication from the hospital. But I'll, I'll link the videos to... Um, my first trimester uh, here so you can go back and have a uh, have a watch if you want to so you can kind of understand how I was starting the second trimester. But down on here that my symptoms started to ease from around about 17 weeks. Um, this was the case with um, my pregnancy with Noah as well. It was around about between week 17 to week 20 then I noticed things starting to get better. Um, with the medication in terms of keeping food down and things like that and I was starting to feel less sick. So that was week 17. Um, so between week 17 and week 20 nothing really changed. Um, I was back to work, um, I was still, I am still working from home some days, most days, um, but I do go into the office a couple of days a week just to kind of keep in touch with everybody. Um, so I am still on the medication, both kinds. Um, that I was prescribed in my first trimester for the hyperemesis. Then we got to week 20 and we had our 20 week scan. So we'd already found out the gender um, at week 16 because we went for a private scan. So we found out we were having a girl then and then we got that confirmed at the 20 week scan. Um, everything was looking fine. The whole 20 week scan went very well. Everything was fine. Everything got ticked off and marked as, as normal. Um, but we did find out that the baby is breech. So um, that was, I noticed on the scan from when we had our 16 week scan to when we had the 20 week scan that she'd flipped round. Um, that was the first thing I noticed as soon as they put the Doppler on my stomach I was like uh oh she's upside down. But yes, um, it turns out she's breech and she still is breech um, as far as I'm aware. I do have another scan coming up just to check on everything. Um, so it'll be interesting to see but I'm pretty sure she still is breech. So between weeks 20 to 22 again nothing changed. I've just written down on here that at 22 weeks my colostrum started actually leaking. I'm um, sorry if this is a bit TMI but you know it's all about pregnancy and so things are going to get a bit TMI. Yeah it was around about 22 weeks that um, I started leaking colostrum and that is still ongoing. Um, obviously you produce, you start producing colostrum from around about 16 weeks of pregnancy in preparation for the baby being born so um, that was something that I'm still dealing with at 22 weeks. Luckily I had loads of breast pads so that's uh, <laughs> something that's come in handy. Then at 24 weeks I had my glucose tolerance test. Not everybody has to have a glucose test, which I didn't realise because um, in my first pregnancy with my son, he's coming up to seven, it was just standard that everybody was tested. But I think since Covid they've kind of taken a few of the unnecessary things out, which um, I'm not entirely happy with. Like I would rather be tested for it than not. I was um, marked down as having to have a glucose tolerance test because I'd had a previously large baby. So if you've had a previously large baby, it indicates that you could have another large baby which could also indicate gestational diabetes. So I had my glucose tolerance test at 20, I think I was 24 plus two or 24 plus three. Um, and it was really straightforward, just went to the hospital, um, had a blood test, had the sugary drink, 
and then waited two hours and had another blood test and it was a case of that they would ring me if anything came back raised um, and if I didn't hear anything then everything was fine and I haven't heard anything and I've since then seen the results of that test um, and everything was fine so that all came back clear. Then I went for a midwife appointment in my 25th week so my midwife appointments tend to be um, on a Thursday and my week's turnover on a Wednesday so I was 25 plus 1 and at this midwife appointment um, everything else was fine they do the usual checks so they do your urine and um, your blood pressure your CO2 um, where you just blow into a tube um, and they check your CO2 levels um, what else do they do they feel the baby they measure your bump that sort of thing everything else was fine except the baby was now lying sideways so she'd gone from being breech to being transverse um, which I kind of had figured because I was feeling most of the movements on one side um, just to also note as well I do have an anterior placenta so a lot of my movements are muffled because the placenta is on like the outside of um, like my belly rather than on the inside like against my back so I do feel a lot less movements than most people but at this stage around about 25 weeks she was relatively strong so I can feel I could feel some movements um, but I was feeling them all on my right hand side and not much on my left so I had assumed that she had was lying sideways or that she'd kind of tucked her legs downwards so like um, that she'd flipped over and her legs were in a funny position um, but yeah the midwife confirmed that she was actually lying sideways so that's classed as transverse then around 25 weeks and 6 days um, I know this to be exact because um, I couldn't go to the hospital I had to go to the midwife because I was experiencing some reduced movements so I hadn't felt her move um, the night previous um, and she was normally really really active from around about five six o'clock she would just kind of have this massive um, like rush of movements and she would be active for a good few hours and I never had that um, and I tried having something sugary to eat and drink to kind of give her a bit of a, um, a sugar rush to um, kickstart some movements and that didn't work either so I left it throughout the night I shouldn't have, I should have just rang um, the hospital after like office hours but I woke up on the, the morning of 25 weeks and 6 days which was a Tuesday um, and I rang my midwife as soon as I could and I said listen you know I'm experiencing these reduced movements what do I do and she would said unfortunately because I wasn't at the 26 week mark I couldn't go to the hospital um, they wouldn't have seen me there it was down to my midwife so she said just come straight down we'll have a listen in um, and we'll check you over make sure that everything is okay and if needs be I could have gone up to the hospital from there um, so I did just that I went straight down to the midwife office um, I was there within 10 minutes of the phone call um, and got checked over and everything was fine. It was just that the baby had kind of, she'd gone behind my placenta and she tucked herself into like a little ball. So I couldn't feel any of the movements because they were all coming against my placenta. As soon as the midwife put her hands on my stomach and started to move around and feel everything, she kicked. So it was just one of those things. I would rather have been safe than sorry. Um, and I'm pleased that I went because it did give me peace of mind that everything else was okay. And I know now that... Um, now I'm past the 26 week mark, if I do have any further episodes of um, reduced movements or change in movements then I can just go straight up to the hospital. I'm sorry if the light keeps changing as well, I'm sitting in front of a window so it's just the sun keeps going in and out behind the clouds. Um, so between kind of 26 to 28 weeks nothing really changed, I was needing to have like regular snacks rather than big meals because there's not a lot of room in there anymore so I was finding that when I was eating big meals it was making me feel a lot worse because my stomach was just getting too full so it was easier just to have um, smaller meals more regularly throughout the day um, and drinking plenty of water. I did order some um, maternity bras um, so like breastfeeding bras because I am planned on breastfeeding um, so I ordered them from a company called Hot Milk Lingerie I'll leave their details down in the description if you want to head over and check them out because they are really really good and the um, quality is amazing and they're not too expensive I had seen that Bravissimo did um, some nursing bras but they were really expensive they were like £40 for one bra um, so I did a quick google I went on Instagram um, and I had a look around to see kind of what was being promoted at the time and hot milk lingerie kept coming up now I know the Bravissimo stock some of their range as well 
Um, so I went on the website directly and um, I actually got 10% off because I signed up. They have like a link if you just sign up and receive like their newsletter every week or what have you then you can get a 10% off code. So I got two bras um, and one of them was completely boneless and one of them had the I'm wearing now has like a flexible wire. So it gives you a bit more support but it's more comfortable because obviously when your bump starts getting bigger and pushing up you don't want anything like too tight across your like middle. So it was around about 26 weeks pregnant as well that I did a breastfeeding course. Um, so just a quick history on like my breastfeeding journey. Um, I did try to breastfeed my first son and um, that was nearly seven years ago, but it turned out that he had cow's milk protein allergy. So as a first time mum, I just couldn't, um, I didn't want to deal with cutting dairy or cow's milk protein out of my diet. Um, so he went on to prescription formula, so he was then bottle fed. So I wanted to kind of refresh my memory um, of like breastfeeding. Um, I came across this page on Instagram called The Baby Academy UK um, and they kept advertising these free courses and I thought, oh, it'll not be free, you'll get like um, a link or something and it'll, the first hour will be free and then you'll have to pay for the rest or something like that. But the more I looked into it, the more I was like, no, these courses are actually free. So it was an hour and a half long course and it was live. So um, it was just like over like a Zoom thing. You didn't have to be seen or heard, so you weren't like... Um, filmed or anything like that if you didn't want to be and um, you could chat in the comments and things like that if you wanted to but it, it was um it was actually really really good so it was just a, a lady who was um a midwife um obviously like a medical professional um and she was trained in different areas of breastfeeding and tongue tie and that sort of thing um and she ran through like a very it was very basic but it was a very informative hour and a half long chat about breastfeeding and then they gave you a link to um their like more ultimate breastfeeding course like the more established course which was like a three hour long course um and they gave you a discount code for that if you wanted to sign up and purchase the course um so i haven't done that because i feel like i've got a lot of information already from various instagram accounts past experience the initial um course that i did with the baby academy um so again, I'll leave their links down in the description box below if you want to go over and check them out on Instagram or their courses. They do different um, courses as well. So there is like a baby safety, there's introducing solids, there's um, caring for your newborn, there's a breastfeeding one as I've mentioned. So they do loads of different things and they're all completely free, um, which is very rare these days that you get things for free. So I thought it was really good. Um, so I did that um, and as I said it was brilliant, I would um, highly recommend it to anybody who's wanting to do like an introduction to breastfeeding or if you're wanting to do like the baby safety if it's your first baby um, and you're com like a complete novice like I was when it was my first baby, it would have been great to have that back then but I didn't know about it. <laughs> so then we get to week 28 which was I think the last week of my second trimester or either the first week of my third trimester, it's however you, you judge it, um, but I'm going to include it in this video. Um, so I had my 28 week midwife appointment and at this point the baby was still sideways so she'd gone from being breech and she was still lying across and um, she was in more of a diagonal position so her head was kind of up on one side and her legs were down on another in like towards my hip so she was more of a diagonal um, but again still classed as transverse at this point. Everything else was fine by that appointment, so urine, blood pressure, that sort of thing. Um, and it was at this point then I started measuring a week ahead. So I was 28 weeks and one, and I was measuring 29 and one. So um, that was the same with my pregnancy with Noah. Uh, so she's either going to be big like her brother, or it's just that I carry bigger, um, I'm carrying bigger than she is. It was also in this week that I was prescribed something for um, acid reflux. Now I know lots of women get heartburn and indigestion with pregnancy but acid reflux is something I didn't experience in my first pregnancy um, and I have this time around and it's just so intense I can't describe it. It was getting to the point where it was making me feel really nauseous, um, I didn't want to eat, I couldn't eat certain things because it triggered it. Um, so I just I went to the doctor and I said I needed some help basically and they prescribed me some omeprazole. So I'm now on that medication as well. I still am only a couple of weeks into taking that so um, I could potentially wean myself off that if the acid reflux eases but it's one of those things I'll not know until I stop taking it. So I'm going to let this prescription that I have run out and then see where we stand and it might be the case that I have to get more.
and that's everything so that is kind of everything that has happened in my second trimester it's not been too eventful other than the one incident of reduced movements um which was scary i'm not gonna lie it was very worrying and you get to that point where you think oh how when was the last time i felt a move because you get so complacent you just get used to feeling the move that when you don't it's a, it's more like when did I last feel a move? Oh my gosh, have I been counting the movements? Did she move then? Did she move then? It can kind of drive you a bit insane, but um, the best bit of advice I've got is just ring your midwife. They are, That's what they're there for. They're there to help. And my midwife was so lovely and she said, you know, you've done the right thing coming down um, just in future. Don't leave it as long. Don't leave it overnight. Just ring as soon as you're worried. Just ring and get some reassurance. And even if you go to the hospital and they listen in to the baby or they put you on the monitors and they realise the baby is fine, then it, your mind has been put at ease and, you know, no harm has been done. So that's it. That's going to wrap up my um, second trimester update. Um, as I said, I'll leave a couple of the links down in the description box below for um, the... The Baby Academy, where you can do your free uh, courses on baby care and breastfeeding. And I'll also link the Hot Milk Lingerie website as well if you're interested in getting um, any nursing bras or anything like that. Uh, I will also leave my Instagram details down in the description box below as well if you want to come over and follow me on there. So yes, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.